Praise the Lord, everybody. Beautiful day, beautiful Sunday afternoon. I wanted to come out here and share the word of the Lord with you today. So I ask that you get your Bibles out. And we will be in the book of Psalms, Psalms chapter 15, verse 1. And it reads, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? Who shall abide in thy tabernacle? So this is the question, and he's going to give you the answer of who shall abide in his house. Which lets me know, you know, what same, always same doctrine is not true. It's, 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 it's false. He, you know, Jesus told you that you have to abide in him. If you abide in him and his words abide in you, you shall ask what you will. And it will be done unto you because you are connected to him if you abide in him you have to abide i don't believe once saved always saved i think i think if once saved always saved <laughs> adam and eve would have never failed if, if 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 someone i think that would have had eternal security would have been the first human beings which was adam and eve but because of their disobedience, because of sin, it, they died. So they lost their salvation. Look at Satan. Satan was in heaven. And because of iniquity was found in him, he was what? Kicked out of heaven. What is the common factor in both cases? Sin. Disobedience. That pushed them out of God's dwelling place. Psalms chapter 15, verse one, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? The holy hill. That holy hill, that place that sits on high, that, that enables you to be able to see at a further distance. See, I used to watch this show called Bear Grylls. That was <laughs> that that show. That was that was one of my favorite shows. And he would get on these islands, and he would he would get um, go to these places, and he would you know teach you how to survive if you were you know lost in the desert, if you were you know you didn't have no, no food or no water and different things like that. But when he would go to a certain island deserted island uh, one of the main things that he would say is that you want to go to you want to reach the top of the hill the high hills of that of that um, of that island you want to try to get on the top because when you get to the top of that hill you can see what's around you you can see at a further at a in a in a further distance and you can scan what's around you so understanding that who shall dwell in thy holy hill which means you know as you abide close to the lord you abide in his house you dwell in that holy hill in that place where god allows you to see what you couldn't see before it's very important to understand that and understanding that there's there there is infinite truth that's out there that's in god infinite truth there's so much things that 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 we <laughs> have no knowledge about but god has it and the holy spirit will reveal these secret mysteries and revelation to us if we stay and dwell in his house and where we stay on top in the holy hill that place where you can see that's where he wants us to, to that's the position that he wants us to be in but he had but this is the question who shall abide in thy tabernacle who shall dwell in thy holy hill Verse 2, he that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. 
So the first part in verse two, he says, he that walketh uprightly. See, God is concerned with how you walk. He looks at all of these things. Are you chasing after righteousness? He says, seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added. You have to, your life commitment has, has to be to walk uprightly and work righteousness. You got to work it. See, you have to work. See, it's just like, um, it's just like, you know, you, you get a, you, you get a machine. If you want to, um, if you want to, you know, make a building, you have to get these machines and that these bulldozers to be able to tear down the trees and tear things down. But even though you have the machine and the equipment to do it, if you don't work it, it's not going to benefit you. You can have the machine, but if you don't work, the machine is not going to benefit. See, the righteousness that God is telling us that we have to work is because your flesh is in opposition against the things of the spirit. Your flesh doesn't want to work righteousness. It wants to live in sin. It wants to stay further and further away from God. It wants to hide from God and, uh, and, and chase the things of this life and fulfill it and fulfill itself with the things of your flesh that make, that make your flesh feel good. But you have to work that righteousness. When you know, you know, to do wrong, you know, you, you know to do, to, you, 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 you have a decision to do wrong or to do right. I mean, you know to do right. What are you going to do? Are you going to choose to do right or wrong? You got to work righteousness. You, you know, you're, when, you're, you're, you, when something, somebody does something wrong to you, your flesh don't want you to forgive them. Your flesh wants you to just have an attitude with them. Don't speak to them no more. That's what your flesh want to do. But you got to work the righteousness to say, you know what? Now, I forgive you. And still talk to them and, 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 and be a peacemaker. Put a smile on their face. Even if they wronged you. Hey, you know what? You tell them, hey, you know what? It's all good. You know, you, know, you, you look nice today. You gotta, you know, you, you're very intelligent or whatever. Whatever you can do to, you know what I'm saying, to, to bring peace into a turmoil type environment. And when you've wronged somebody, do that. Work righteousness, man. God sees these things. And this is who he says will abide in his tabernacle and dwell in his holy hill. The place where God reveals things to you. The place where you're able to see what others can't see. You want to stay at that place of receiving truth. Because look at what he says. Verse 2. He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness. Watch this. And speaketh the truth in his heart. Speaketh what truth? The truth that the Holy Spirit reveals to that individual. See, when you walk uprightly and you work righteousness... God is, you're, you're dwelling in his tabernacle. You're dwelling at his holy hill because in other words, you're able to see what? Through the lenses of holiness. And when you're seeing through the lenses of holiness, God gives you truth. He gives you revelation. And that truth is going to weigh in in your heart. That truth is going to weigh in deep in your heart. Okay? And speaketh truth in his heart because he's going to use you. So an individual that walk uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth that the Lord places in that, that in your heart. When you share that word, that's why what, that's what the Bible says, what, what he speaks to you secretly you know what I'm saying? 
speak out openly. You know, what he tells you in secret. Speak that thing on the mountaintop. Share that truth. This is what he says, verse 3. He that back, backbiteth not his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor. So what does that mean? People are closest to you. See, is and, and a lot of times it's easier to work righteousness with people further away from you. But the real proven factor a lot of times is your neighbor or those that are closest to you. People in your family, your wife, you know, you know what I'm saying? Your family members. Are you able to work righteousness with those that are closest to you? Because it's easier to forgive somebody that you don't have to live with. It's easier to forgive the person when you're driving in traffic and they, they cut you off. It's easy to, to forgive them. But can you forgive your wife? You understand? That there's something wrong? Can you forgive your kids? Can you, or are you gonna hold a grudge? Verse four, in whose eyes a vile person is, is contempt, but he honors them that fear the Lord. He that swerve to his own heart and changes not. In whose eyes a vile person is contemned. But he honoreth them that fear the Lord. People that do vile things. You know, people that walk in wickedness. You don't even go that path. You don't connect with people that's that's acting in those ways you try to you try to congregate around individuals that that chase after righteousness you you don't even you don't even like to give to give um, you don't even like to watch evil things on television be around individuals that do evil things See, when you stay in that place, it affects you. These things affect you. It affects you. So this is very important. He that swerves to his own heart and changes not. Verse 5. He that put it, <clears throat> he that put him not out his money to usury, nor taketh reward against the innocent. You don't treat people wrong. You know, you do people right, man. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> it, it's a factor or, you know, you don't try to take advantage of people. You don't try to cheat people. You know what I'm saying? You don't try to, you know, get over on individuals. You have the heart to treat people treat people right and do good to them and look what he says in verse 5 there the last sentence he that doeth these things shall never be moved you know why that person will never be moved because God will reveal himself inside of that person in great degrees <clears throat> the weight of truth that the Holy Spirit will reveal to that individual will be extremely powerful. See, truth has weight. It has weight. When God reveals his glory, it, there's a weight to his glory of how he reveals himself. It's weight to it. As you do these things, as you seek the Lord, God will reveal truth to you that will have such an impact inside of you, in your soul, of that truth hitting you, that there's no way that you could, like, you know, be moved. 
from the Lord. See, that's why Jesus told Peter, he said, Peter, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat. But Jesus said, I pray for you that your faith fail not. See? That person, what, what it says here in Psalms, they won't be moved because faith will be produced inside of them. And faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So in other words, God is going to speak to that person and everything that God speaks to, to you is truth. So that truth is going to be so, 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 uh, so powerful as it, when it hits your spirit that you're going to know of a surety that God is with you. You're going to know of a surety to chase after righteousness. You're going to know of a surety to seek the things of the Lord forever. You won't be moved. But if you don't do these things, see, this is why when you don't do these things, you'll be moved because God is not going to reveal himself to that individual in those degrees. See, God can reveal the truth to you in, 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 in such an extreme that it changes your whole life, man. The woman at the well. You know, what What was it that Jesus did to change her life? He didn't heal her of a sickness. He didn't raise her from the dead. The only thing he did was reveal truth to her. And it, and it affected her so much that she went back into the city and told, told everybody, come see a man that told me all the things I had done. She was changed by truth. And the weight of truth that hit her changed her, man. See, the spirit of truth, which is the Holy Spirit, can reveal truth to you that will have an extreme impact on you. John the Baptist, the Bible said he was one that he was crying in the wilderness. He lived in the wilderness, eating what? Wild honey and uh, locusts. And he had didn't even have good clothes. He just had camel's hair. And yet he lived out there for one purpose, to cry, to get, he cried in the wilderness to get people to repent. He wasn't even worried about these worldly things. Why? Truth was in him, that, the weight of truth. Of what? Salvation. The need to be saved is greater than anything that can be pursued in this life. So he was willing to give up all these material comforts and cry to get people to repent. Crying in the wilderness. Crying to folk. Pleading with them to repent. Why? The weight of truth. that was in his heart. See, there's truth that we haven't even come to, to understand. But the Spirit of God will reveal it to you if you dwell in his tabernacle and you dwell in his holy hill. God bless. Peace.